be a powerful force. No one knows that better than the people who are sure they've seen Bigfoot and in Colorado. In this week's Storytellers Report, 9 News reporter Colleen Ferreira and photojournalist Matt McKella talk to people who say they are sure of what they saw. This is a story you can't just tell anyone. Right now, it's all legend and lore. It's a tale of a creature that's been seen by many, but believed by few. All it takes is one experience that you cannot explain, and you become a believer. A believer in the unknown, having faith in something that's never truly proved to be real. Sometimes I still can't believe that we saw what we saw. Kate Murphy's story is anything but normal. It was a short but surreal moment in the forest, May 29th, 2012. 7.30 on a cool summer evening. My neighbor and I decided to go for a walk in the woods. An early evening stroll in the mountains on a path about a mile off US 285 made her heart skip a beat. We didn't show Kate's face because she wants to keep her privacy. We heard a noise up in that direction, like a loud branch breaking, and we did. And then we looked, and there was this creature, and it ran down this hill and then it disappeared. What Murphy says she saw was about seven and a half feet tall, a living, breathing, mammal-like being that's been spotted hundreds of times in and around Bailey, Colorado. What Murphy thinks she saw was Sasquatch, also known as Bigfoot. It was not a human gate. It was not a human. Never thought about Bigfoot. I've never gone out and looked for Bigfoot. It was there. Because Murphy and her friend both experienced the sightings together, investigators who claimed to study the Bigfoot phenomenon deemed their sighting credible. Lots of sightings, but from a scientific perspective, no valid evidence. John Domboski is a curator of vertebrae zoology at Denver's Museum of Nature and Science. He tells us there's no clear video or picture to prove that a Bigfoot creature is real. Moreover, there's not a bona fide specimen of a Bigfoot in any museum or collections across the U.S. or on, in the world. We asked Mboski how people go about studying Bigfoot's existence when they've never collected a specimen of the creature. He calls it well, cryptozoology, a form of technique. pseudoscience. The lines of evidence to justify or verify that you've got this nine foot primate, we don't have that scientific evidence. But here at the Bailey Country Store, that doesn't matter. We're at 149 Main Street. Jim Myers and his wife opened this store last June. This place has quickly become the Bigfoot Mecca of the Southwest. They call it the Sasquatch Outpost. If they have a story to tell, they want to tell it. Great. Did you find everything This you store need? brings believers of Bigfoot on common ground. Tales are told with colored pins on this map in their store, a map that now belongs to the Bigfoot theory, where Sasquatch spotters from all over the country come to file their epic sightings. It leaves you with a bit of a dilemma that you've got to decide one way or the other. The Myers say that people go squatching because they believe in yeah. their heart of hearts there's a being out there, a creature of nature that's left a significant imprint in the snow and in Kate's mind. You know, some people say it just can't exist, but God has made this huge world and man doesn't know it all. Because sometimes we fear the unknown. We don't want to know what exists out here. Science tells us this creature isn't real, that it just can't exist. But Murphy says she still believes she saw something and she's sure glad 